Hello, hello. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, Rafael. How are you? Fine, thank you. Fine. How was your weekend? It was good. Good, good. What did and you do? I, what did I, you do? Uh, I went to have dinner with my family mm. and I had to work on Sun and Saturday. Saturday. Oh. But, yes. Well, That's, part of work, part with the family. That's good. Yes. <laughs> and, okay. and I was relaxing. Oh, nice. And what did you have for dinner? Uh, we we had some hamburger. Oh. My, in my burger. Oh, nice. It was delicious. I imagine hamburger, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> In my case, I went with my family and we had uh, pizza. Yeah. Pizza. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I love pizza. Yeah. But, but remember, it's not good because it's uh, junk food, right? So, but from, right. Time, from time to time, it's, it's nice to, to have, mm -hmm. you know, junk food, right? Right. Okay. So, welcome to the class, eh, Rafa. Thank you. Okay. And then we have Dagoberto, right? Hi, Dago. Hi. Hi. How are you? Fine, thank you. How was your day, Dago? Uh, no, How was your day? It's uh, very well. No, very well. You were working, uh, I imagine. Huh? You yeah. were working. Yes, yes. Yeah. All days a week. Teaching mathematics, right? Uh -huh. Teacher of math, maths. Teacher. Yes, exactly. congratulations. Yeah. I admire people who, who is good with math because I'm really bad. <laughs> no. <in math. laughs> Yes, I, I remember easy. those uh, binomials, trinomials, mm. you know, come on. Yeah, it's yeah. a nightmare for, you, for me. <laughs> okay, but welcome, mm. Dago, welcome. It's a pleasure that you are in the class again. Okay, so we're going to start right now. Uh, we're going to go to the platform. And let's start right now. Let me see. We are... Oops, here, right? Yes. Sharing. Oops. Um, yes, that's the one, right? So we're going to start with part number five, right? Let me give you the general information for this week. We are going to make the, the test review, final test on Wednesday. And they are going to close the platform uh, Wednesday, but on Thursday, we're going to have a, a class, right? A class, the last class together, right? And that's it. This is going to be uh, the last week together, right? And we're going to finish the level. And now let's start with the exercise for today is 5.1 is the, the objective for this class, right? So it says, uh, would you like to read, Rafael, for, for me? Read the, the introduction there. Okay. Watch the video about different culture around the world and in the discussing forum, share similar experience that you have had with people from other countries that you have met. Okay, very good. Perfect. Now? We're going to start watching the video. Let me see. The video is here, right? Okay. First, we're going to see the video, right? Without subtitles. Then later, we're going to see it, uh, let's see, with subtitles, right? And then we're going to discuss together. Here we go. Just give me a second. I am lost with the mouse. It's okay. So we're here. Hmm. Sorry, class. I'm gonna use my notepad here. Yes, I have it. Okay, please. Observe the video. 
Hi, I'm Chris Brooks. Welcome to Travel World. Have you ever traveled to a country with a completely different culture? If you have, you probably know what culture shock is. It's a feeling of confusion you get from suddenly being in a new environment. The traditions and customs may seem strange. Expectations are different. You don't know exactly what you're supposed to do. You may even be a little bit afraid of making a mistake. In time, you get used to everything. But when you get home, you often have some interesting and perhaps humorous stories to tell about your cross-cultural experiences. Today, we're going to Latin America to meet some people who traveled abroad and hear about their experiences crossing cultures. First, let's go to Brazil. Ah, yes, Rio de Janeiro. Enjoying a spectacular view of Sugarloaf Mountain is our lucky reporter, Fatima Nolan. Hi, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Rio de Janeiro. Like everywhere else in the world, people here like to travel abroad and have some interesting stories to tell. Let's talk with some of them. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Camila and I was born in Stockholm, Sweden, but I moved to Rio when I was four and I've lived here ever since. Two years ago, I went to Sweden and I lived there for a year. What did you notice that was different? Well, the first thing that I noticed when I got to Sweden was how people greet each other. It was completely different because here in Brazil, we kiss and shake and they shake hands. So I went to kiss like and they, oh my goodness, what's going on? And they felt like you're invading my space or something like that. It was strange. <laughs> Fatima Nolan from Rio de Janeiro. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Fatima. Now, let's cross the South American continent to Lima, Peru, where our reporter Denise Oregui is standing by. Denise? Thanks, Chris. We're here at the beautiful Plaza de Armas. This is a favorite spot for tourists and the people of Lima. Let's talk to some people here about their cross-cultural experiences. Hey, what's your name and where are you from? My name's Andrew and I'm from the United States. Have you noticed any difference in the way people do things here in Peru? Yeah, one thing that I've really noticed is the public transportation system is really different. Because here, the bus system is private, and so there's all these people trying to get you on their bus because the way they make money is by getting as many people as possible to get on their bus. So the whole time they're yelling, get on my bus, get on my bus. And sometimes it's not the bus that you want to be getting on. This is Denise Arregui here in Lima, Peru. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, Denise. Now reporter Hillary Garcia is standing by in Mexico, our final destination for today. What do you have for us, Hillary? Thanks, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Tepesland, Mexico, a town that both Mexican and foreign tourists like to visit. Let's talk with a few of them about their cross-cultural experiences. <laughs> Hi, what's your name and where are you from? My name is Delfino Valdez and I was born in Reynosa, Mexico and now I live in the United States. Tell us about your cross-cultural experience. I am married to an American woman and she was making me lunch one day and she brought me a soup and a sandwich. Once I was done with it, I said, okay, honey, where's the rest of it? And she said, that was it. Well, it is customary in my culture to have a huge meal in the middle of the day. The beans, the rice, the meat. So needless to say, I was very surprised. This is Hillary Garcia in Tepesland, Mexico. Back to you, Chris. Until next time, this is Chris Brooks for Travel World, bidding you bon voyage. Okay, the video was talking about 
Three people, right? Three persons. Camila. And who are the two persons? Andrew. And Andrew. Delfino. And Delfino, Delfino. right? Delfino. Camila, Andrew, and Delfino, right? Okay, and Camila is living in where? Brazil. 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 Very good. Okay. And Andrew? Andrew is living in, in Santa Ana or San Miguel or where? I don't know. United States. Oh, United States? He's from the United States, but, but he's in he Peru. In Peru. And now okay. he's in Peru, right? Well, I don't know if he's living in Peru, but in, at the moment of the interview, he was there in Peru. Very good. And then we have Delfino. Delfino got yes. married with a person from what country? United States. United States, okay, very good. So that is the context. Now we're going to watch the video again, but this time with subtitles, right? And uh, when I make more questions about it, right? There you go again. Hi, I'm Chris Brooks. Welcome to Travel World. If you ever travel to a country with a completely different culture, if you have, you probably know what culture shock is. It's a feeling of confusion you get from suddenly being in a new environment. The traditions and customs may seem strange. Expectations are different. You don't know exactly what you're supposed to do. You may even be a little bit afraid of making a mistake. In time, you get used to everything. But when you get home, you often have some interesting and perhaps humorous stories to tell about your cross-cultural experiences. Today, we're going to Latin America to meet some people who've traveled abroad and hear about their experiences crossing cultures. First, let's go to Brazil. Ah, yes, Rio de Janeiro. Enjoying a spectacular view of Sugarloaf Mountain is our lucky reporter, Fatima Nolan. Hi, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Rio de Janeiro. Like everywhere else in the world, people here like to travel abroad. I have some interesting stories to tell. Let's talk with some of them. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Camila, and I was born in Stockholm, Sweden, but I moved to Rio when I was four, and I've lived here ever since. Two years ago, I went to Sweden, and I lived there for a year. What did you notice that was different? Well, the first thing that I noticed when I got to Sweden was how people greet each other. It was completely different, because here in Brazil, we kiss on the cheek, and they shake hands. So I went to kiss like, and they, oh my goodness, what's going on? And they felt like they're invading my space or something like that. But it's strange. <laughs> okay, so we have Camila, right? Uh, Camila was born where? Sweden. In Sweden, right? Stockholm, Stor Sweden. Stockholm, the, Stockholm. the capital city, right? The yes. capital. Very good. So, and then she moved to, to what country when she was four years? Brazil. Brazil, right? Brazil. And then recently she traveled to Sweden again. She came back. For, one year, for, for a year. Okay, very good. And what is the cross-cultural experience she had? Who wants to tell me? In Brazil, the people is more friendly. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, really how for example how do they greet each other Yolanda uh, with a kiss and uh -huh. uh, I don't know uh, mm, the cheeks his can his hand no no wait wait hand, hand Brazil shakes. is okay with, with kiss right uh-huh excuse okay. me with handshakes uh-huh but but this is not in Brazil well it probably yes but it's more custom uh, customary to to like Yolanda says to kiss to kiss, kiss. like in El Salvador kiss, right yes. you kiss 
the person, right? Well, recently, not, not much because of the coronavirus, right? But Coming soon again. Sorry? Coming soon again. <laughs> the oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I expect, I expect we, we again uh, get closer with people, right? But anyway, so, but when she went to Sweden, how is the way they greet each other? Only handshake. O only handshake, right? Very good. Only handshake. That's it, right? And do you think this affect Camila in a way? Mm, oh, surprise! Maybe. Camila. I'm sorry. Maybe because maybe because she's a friendly person. Uh huh. And in in, in Europe, right? In Sweden, in in other countries, right? They don't like to be so close to you. They have this area or space where. You know, they say respect that space, right? Invade your space. Uh huh. They believe that, right? But you know, in El Salvador, no problem. You can invade my space. Right? <laughs> it's different, right? Okay, let's continue, and we're going to learn about Andrew, right? Okay. And sometimes I I lost my mouse. Oh, here. Okay, good. Fatima Nolan from Rio de Janeiro. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Fatima. Now, let's cross the South American continent to Lima, Peru, where our reporter Denise Oregui is standing by. Denise? Thanks, Chris. We're here at the beautiful Plaza de Armas. This is a favorite spot for tourists and the people of Lima. Let's talk to some people here about their cross-cultural experiences. Hey, what's your name and where are you from? My name's Andrew and I'm from the United States. Have you noticed any difference in the way people do things here in Peru? Yeah, one thing that I've really noticed is the public transportation system is really different. Because here, the bus system is private. And so there's all these people trying to get you on their bus because the way they make money is by getting as many people as possible to get on their bus. So the whole time they're yelling, get on my bus, get on my bus. And sometimes it's not the bus that you want to be getting on. This is Denise Arregui here in Lima, Peru. Back to you, Chris. Okay, very good. So that's the second person. The name is Andrew, you say, right? He's from United States. And what is the cross-cultural thing he, he sees different from United States and, and Peru? The public transportation. Public transportation. Do you know a country with, uh, some years ago, the public transportation was similar when we have some cobradores, right? In the, in the mini yes. van. Yes, what country? Our country. Our country. El Salvador. <laughs> In the past, you remember the, the... Yes, we used to have... I don't know how to cobradores. say, but cobradores, right? They used to say, okay, yeah. metro, metro, you know, okay. centro, centro. So they tried to catch all the clients, right? The the most crowded the microbus is or minivan is, right? So to make more money they make more, more money, right? The more money they get. So that's it, right? So it's something similar. Do you think the United States is the same for no. Andrew? No? It's different. It's How different come? because How it's, it's uh, a public transportation. Okay. So the government is well the, organized. The, the driver, right? Yes. The government pays the, the, the drivers, okay. Welcome, Fernando. We're watching a video. Welcome. Hi, good evening. <laughs> okay, so let's continue. We're discussing about some people in Latin America right now. Let's go to the last one. Thank you, Denise. Now reporter Hillary Garcia is standing by in Mexico, our final destination for today. What do you have for us, Hillary? Thanks, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Tepoztlan, Mexico, a town that both Mexican and foreign tourists like to visit. Let's talk with a few of them about their cross-cultural experiences. Hi, what's your name and where are you from? 
My name is Delfino Valdez, and I was born in Reynosa, Mexico, and now I live in the United States. Tell us about your cross-cultural experience. I am married to an American woman, and she was making me lunch one day, and she brought me a soup and a sandwich. Once I was done with it, I said, okay, honey, where's the rest of it? And she said, that was it. Well, it is customary in my culture to have a huge meal in the middle of the day. The beans, the rice, the meat. So needless to say, I was very surprised. This is Hillary Garcia in Tepoztlan, Mexico. Back to you, Chris. Until next time, this is Chris Brooks for Travel World, bidding you bon voyage. Okay, that's it, right? Now, uh, let's go back. Hey, Mauricio, how are you? Hello, welcome. how are you, teacher? Welcome, welcome, Mauricio. Thank you very much. Okay, good. So uh, that was the last last uh, person, right? Uh, Delfino. Delfino was born in what country, class? Mexico. Mexico, right? And he was married. He was married in what country? United <laughs> States. Like that looks <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, what country? It's from United States. Okay, yes. He was married. With... People say American, American right? But, American. You know, <laughs> but all of some... us are American yes. people. Yeah. But this is... She's gringa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. North good, American. Good. No, listen, it, I heard that the custom to call people from United States American is that they are United States from America. So in, in Europe, for example, the custom to call people, that's what I read, right? I'm not sure if it's true, but that's what I read, <laughs> is that when, when they go to, to Europe, they don't call the, uh, you're from United States from America. So, oh, come on, it's too long, right? Hey. United States from America, no, so they, they call your American, instead of say United States, I know. So it was a custom and then they they got this uh, uh, germ, right? This uh, origin. And so they, they used to call themselves uh, America, you know, well, but that's another story. The thing is these guys are married with a, with a woman from the United States, right? And what about what? What is the cross cultural experience Delfino had with his the wife? Food. The food, the food, right? <laughs> you know, a soup and a sandwich, right? That was the yes. But like, for example, uh, Irving, what what do you usually have for breakfast? For example, Irving, uh, we usually have beans, uh, fried egg, uh, plantain, uh -huh. coffee, milk, and that's it. That's it, bread, right? Pla course. Platanito, you know, uh, fried plantain. A typical, fried plantain, platanito, a typical right? Salvadoran uh, breakfast. That's it, right? In, you know, in Mexico, it's almost the same. They have a lot of things, right? In lunch also, you know, we have, for example, a frijolito, bean soup, right? With yeah. cream, you know, avocado. <laughs> avocado, yeah. Right? Cheese, rice. Rice. <laughs> Come on. And some people even put some curtido, right? Curtidos, some yeah. people do that, yeah. Uh, some, I don't know what, uh, meat also, right? Meat, right? Well, a lot of things. So we Latin American countries used to have a lot of things, right? But what about people from the United States? Do you think it's the same? It's different. It's different, right? But normally, well, I that's what I see. I have traveled to the United States just once in my life. I went to Miami, but no Mariana, right? Miami, <laughs> United States. And I stayed just for one day. So I, I'm not very familiar with the costume, but uh, from the movies, I see that they have a lot of junk food, right? Hot dogs, hamburgers, pizza, you know? Yeah, and sweet food. Sweet food, you're right, yes. Well, that's it, right? So those are the, that's the video. Now we're going to, uh, I'm gonna make some more extra question, right? Uh, about this video, I'm gonna share my uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, and very good. I have this one, two. Just give me a second. 
again, I have problems to present the. Give me a second class. Oh. The thing that is is a part of the of the Zoom screen that doesn't permit me to. Uh, here, here, I have it. I have it. Yes. Yes. I got it. Finally, right. So cross cultural experience, right? And here we have. I don't know if you can see the all the vocabulary class. Yes. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't see some of the words, but uh, Jolanda, you help me, please. Would you like to read the first three for me? Uh, first three. Yeah, the first three words or expressions. Afraid to make a mistake. Ah, very good. Beautiful. Continue. Beautiful. Confused. Very good. So those are things that you expect uh, not to do in when you're traveling to another country, right? Then the next three ones, please, Dagoberto. Um, eating a human meal at lunch. Uh -huh. kissing, uh, kissing in public. Picture, picture. Picture, very good. Good pronunciation, that's it, right? And then Fernando, the last three. Shaking hands. A spectacular surprise. Very good. So those are the words they use in the in the video, right? Some of the words. Do you understand these words? This vocabulary? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. That's it, right? Now we're going to see some details of the video, right? According to the video, to which country do the following custom refers? Write the name of a country next to its custom, right? So we have five countries, Brazil, Mexico, Peru, Sweden, and the United States. Number one, I will ask specific student, right? Uh, let's start with Sofia. Sofia, people shake hands when they see each other. What country is it? According to the video, right? Um. What is the question? In what people, country do people what, shake hands when they meet? Brazil, Mexico, mm. Sweden, the United States. According to the video, right? I know you. maybe in the United States, they also, or oh, in Mexico and Peru, and well, in all the countries, they shake hands. But according to the video, in what according country? According to the so, video, the girl says, Sweden. Sweden. Sweden, very good, Sweden, Sweden, right? Sweden, yes, right, okay, good. That's it, right? Now, uh, Rafael, it's customary to eat a huge meal around noon. What country? Mexico. Orale, very good, right? So, and then, let me see, uh, Dago, please. In what country do people often eat just a soup and sandwich for lunch? No, 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 sorry, number three, right? People kiss mm -hmm. on the cheek when they meet. People kiss on the cheek when they meet. In uh, Sweden, no, no, I don't remember. Sweden? You don't remember, don't worry, don't worry. So Yolanda, help me please. Eh, Brazil. Brazil. Muito obrigado. Tu convidado do jogo bonito do Brasil. Okay. Very good. So in Brazil. Then, Fernando, in what country do people often eat just a soup and a sandwich for lunch? The United States. The United States of America, right? That's it. And finally, Irving, please. In what country bus drivers we call him a Salvador Bucero, right? <laughs> Bus driver call out to people on the street. In Peru. In Peru, my goodness. That's it, right? So that is the video. I don't know if you have any question about the video. Any extra question? No? Okay. No. So let's let's go to the to the second part of the class today, right? We are going to 
uh, go to grammar, right? And in grammar, we're going to, to see a specific topic for today, right? We're going to learn about noun clauses, right? And uh, to introduce the topic, we're going to learn about some vocabulary, right? Okay, here's the vocabulary we're going to use, right? It's in the part number five of the, of the platform, right? And then we have some problems on some situation here, right? That are very common in every country, right? Public transportation, shopping, the climate, the food, the language, the money, the music, and the people my age, people are, well, in the case of Fernando, I imagine people that are 20. <laughs> In the case of the teacher, the 50, you know? Okay. And then these are the themes we have, right? Anxious, for example, is that I'm anxious about public transportation, for example. I'm anxious about uh, the language in other countries, for example. Imagine I, I go to Paris, for, to, in France, right? And we say, oh, les Marseillais parlent le français, et beaucoup parlent français, monsieur. Okay. So you're, you're anxious about that because maybe you don't know how to speak French, right? Comfortable with, maybe I feel comfortable with the food in Mexico, for example, right? Curious about, I'm not curious about uh, the music in, I don't know, in Africa, for example, right? Enthusiastic about, fascinated by, curious about, nervous about, uncertain about, uncomfortable with. So, you know, uh, these are the propositions we we use, right, to describe uh, the how do you feel about some factors or something, right? Let's say, for example, uh, Mauricio, anxious. What do you feel anxious about in our country, for example, right, Mauricio? Uh... Do you need an example? Or an, an example, yes, an example, Mauricio. Sorry, yes. Okay, and I, anxious is like a. Okay, uh, I will I will tell you what is anxious. Look, feeling nervous. Yeah, feeling nervous. Maybe uh -huh. when you are in the. In Let's the say, I feel anxious about. I feel anxious about. I feel anxious about uh, walking in the street. Okay, good. Along, Excellent. For example. Very good, Mauricio. Thank you. And imagine you're traveling to Cuba, for example, Mauricio. Yeah. I, I traveled uh, to Cuba in 2004. I went to Cuba, right? But imagine you, Mauricio. Uh, what do you think or what do you imagine you will feel anxious about visiting Cuba? Oh, oh, have you been there, Mauricio? I've been there. Uh -huh. Oh, good, good, good. Excellent, my goodness. So yeah. uh, what did you feel anxious about Cuba? I am feel anxious about... I, I felt, I felt. I felt, I feel uh -huh. anxious, anxious about the... Uh, for, I feel anxious about... Uh, to to work in the I don't know how to say uh, how do, uh, to work in the malecon uh, yeah. at night at night Perfect. oh yes uh, yes at night the in famous the story to say that uh -huh. Kinetera, right we that are very popular in that area yeah yes and mm -hmm. uh, Maurice sorry to uh, ask you but it's not a topic but uh, did you travel in the coconut taxis? In Cuba? Coconut tax. Uh, no. What, what, what is that? It's a taxi, like a. Like a, like a moto taxi. Like a moto taxi, uh huh. Ah. That has a form of coconut. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. No, 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 no. I, I don't coconut. travel like that. Yeah, it's it's funny. Funny. I traveled yeah. in an in antique, in, in antique, in car, an, antique car. And, ah, uh, okay, I know, was, I know, yes. 1920, 19... The 60s, 50, maybe, uh, 100, the 50s, 60s, yes, maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, very good. Okay, let's continue, right? Uh, one more example, let me see. Uh, 
let me see. Um, Irving, please. Irving, uh, what what do you feel comfortable with? I in feel, El Salvador, for example. I feel comfortable with um, the music. The music in El Salvador, right? Okay. Thanks God we don't have reggaeton. <laughs> Sorry. I don't like reggaeton, to be honest. <laughs> Sorry, reggaeton <laughs> groups in El Salvador, but the music for Hermano Flore, for example, it's I feel comfortable with that, you know? I imagine the same, right, uh, Irving? Okay, good. Now, uh, Sofia, what country would you like to travel to? A country. What country huh, think... would you like to I travel? Don't... Yes, I would like to travel um Cuba. Cuba too. I'm curious. Okay. Yes. Nice. Curious. Wow. I'm curious Visit. about say say Sophia. I'm curious Visit. about visit Cuba. Visiting Cuba, right? Remember after a preposition, visit. Sophia, we have a, a general, right? About visiting, a right? Huh? Okay, nice. Okay. Nice. And to finish with this, right? Uh, Yolanda, what country would you like to visit to? Mm, I am curious about uh, visiting uh, the south of Chile. Chile. Oh, nice. Yes. Okay. Um, would you like to use the word, the feeling fascinated, Yolanda, in, a, in an expression of Chile? Uh, yes. Uh, I, uh, I will. Would be, I would be. I would be, I would be, uh, I would be uh, fascinated uh, by the astral uh, night. Oh, yes, I imagine, right? Because one part of uh, Chile is very cold, right? And they, they have this astral, right? Night, yeah? Yes. Yeah, uh, La Patagonia, for example, belongs to Chile, right? As far as I know, right? But and Argentina. Argentina and Chile. Okay, very good. Excellent. Now let's go to the meaning of these words. What is anxious, confident, curious, depressed, enthusiastic, fascinated, homesick, insecure, uncertain, right? Would you like to repeat after me, please? Uh, of course, with the microphones off, right? Because of this disturbance. Repeat after me, please. Anxious. Anxious. Okay, microphone soft, please. Thank you, thank you. Okay, confident. Curious. Depressed. Enthusiastic. Fascinated. Homesick. Insecure. Uncertain. Okay, class. Any extra question about this vocabulary? No? Okay, that's it, right? Now, let me see, we have, oh, good. We have something else here. I'm gonna share now the, the platform. I'm gonna share the platform here with you. Give me a second, it's over here, right? Okay, give me a second, it's opening, very good. So that's it, right? Now we watch the video and now we're going to start with this lesson objective, right? Uh, Rafael, would you like to read again the, the lesson objective, please, for the 5.2? Sure. In this class, you will learn how to use noun phrases containing reality clauses. Okay, relative closer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Relative. We're going to learn about that. Okay, so let's go to the video. But well, before the video, sorry, I have something else to share with you, right? I have something else to share with you. Yes, it's here. And well, give me a second. Okay, here. Uh, here. 
It's opening, it's opening, yeah. Okay, very good. Okay, we have this part. Okay. Very good. Challenges of living abroad, right? Imagine you live in another country or you're visiting another country, right? And he says, uh, listen to people talk about moving to a foreign country and check the, the concern you think you would share. Imagine you're living in another country. Would this be the same for you? So let's listen to the audio, please. Okay. Perspectives. Challenges of living abroad. Part A. Listen to people talk about moving to a foreign country. Check the concerns you think you would share. One thing that I'd really miss is hanging out with my friends. Something that I'd be worried about is the local food. I'm a picky eater. Getting used to a different culture might be difficult at first. I'd be worried about not knowing how to get around in a new city. The people that I'd miss the most are my parents. We're very close. Not knowing the local customs is something I'd be concerned about. I'd be nervous about getting sick and not knowing how to explain my symptoms. Communicating in a foreign language could be a challenge. Good. Any question on vocabulary? Questions of vocabulary? No, teacher. No. Okay. No. Good. Now let's see, uh, Yolanda. Um, hanging out. What is? What does that mean? Hanging out. Hanging out is like going outside. For example, Friday. Uh huh. You you like to hang out with your friends, you know, oh. like going to I don't know like any to drink a beer, any bar or I don't know. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So hanging out, right? Okay. Can I say the the slang word for for El Salvador? It's salir a vacilar. <laughs> that okay. was in El Salvador, right? That's hanging out, you know. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good. Any other question? No, okay, good. So Yolanda, uh, which of these sentences, right, uh, is a concern that you you would uh, share with these people? It is your the same opinion for Yolanda too, right? In my personal uh -huh. case, I and would be point. nervous about getting sick and not knowing knowing how to explain my symptoms. Very good. Imagine you are in. In Germany, in, for example, right? And you feel that, and the doctor say, hey, don't care, don't care, Yolanda. And then you say, no, I don't know how to explain. <laughs> okay, good. And Sophia, what about you? What is a concern you share with this opinion? Uh, getting used to a different culture might be difficult. Okay. Yeah, I imagine, yes, it's very difficult. Yeah, uh, I went to Paris, right? And I tried to speak with people uh, in English because they, I don't speak French, right? And people is very cold there in, in, in Paris, right? They, they didn't want to talk to, to us because we were some, some guys over there. And, and, and it's, it feels different, right? Because in El Salvador, if you go to the microbus or the bus or the clinic, wherever you go, it's, uh, it's very hot today. And people start blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right? It's different, so it, it, yes, it's because uh, I have heard that French they like to speak in their language. Uh huh. They don't so like to speak they, English. They hope people speak their language too. Excellent, good idea. Yeah, and also you you see that uh, uh, they speak English. I mean, they they speak, but they don't like to use it, right? Okay, uh, Rafa, what about you? Mm -hmm. Something that I be worried about is the local food. I am picky eater. 
Yes, it's very, very difficult, right? Yeah, I imagine visiting, I don't know, Qatar, for example, right? <laughs> imagine the food there. Mm -hmm. In Iraq, I saw, I, I saw a video where people, uh, they used to eat together. I mean, all the people and they're using the hands and eating. Yeah, you know, so something right. very uh, strong, right? Okay, Mauricio, what about you, Mauricio? Um, for example, all communicating in the first languages could be a challenge. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Yes, a challenge, right? Yeah, imagine speaking French, right? You know? Okay, yeah. and Fernando, what about you, Fernando? <laughs> I read about it. <laughs> okay. Because I went to the friends too. Oh, really? When? When, Fernando? Yeah, in 2018. Oh, recently. In October, yeah. Congratulations. Yes, I went to, uh, I don't like the people. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. felt, I felt very, very happy when I see some uh, chapines. When you saw some chapines, <laughs> huh? Okay. When I saw chapines in the walk to the, to the uh, Eiffel Tower. Uh-huh. Uh, yes, uh, I uh, I was walking and and suddenly uh, they speak Spanish. Yo, oh my goodness, oh. they speak Spanish. Well, I, was, <laughs> I felt very happy. You, uh, they don't know both thought. ways, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like that. But um, I don't speak very good English. But in in this in France in a uh, in Italy too. I speak English because okay. I need to eat because, uh, yes, for example, in Italy, I went in the train for six hours from Milan to Venezia and nice. anybody, anybody talk about anybody speak Spanish there. Mm -hmm. So it was very difficult for me, but I went. <laughs> okay, nice. I have a question for you. Uh, sorry, again, it's not a topic, but when I okay. went, I spent 10 euros for going up yes. to the Eiffel Tower. And today, how much do they ask? I paid like 40 because 40 I walked. Dollars. No, yeah, 40 dollars. Because um, I don't know how to say in English, but nosotros llevábamos una guía que nos iba contando la historia. Ah, okay. Yeah, but, <laughs> the, but the normal could be like 25, right? Yeah, you can you, you can walk or you can use the the elevator. Ascensor. The elevator. The elevator. Oh, I know yeah. exactly. Yeah, but I I prefer walk because you can see, you oh, can yes. talk about other people, you can you can uh, enjoy it. That's what I did, and and when I saw the restaurant, uh, I said no. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I, I I'm not yeah, hungry. I I, I only eat cross sandwich okay, yes, <laughs> for three days in I this imagine. city because Paris is not as cheap. I Nothing is cheap. Expensive. It, right? it's, it's very expensive and the water was like three three or four euros uh -huh. for a bottle. Yes. The bottle yes, of I water. Mean. Yes. Like yes. five or six dollars. But you can buy the water in the supermarket and it's, yes. it's uh, cheaper than yes, in the right. other places. Exactly, Be uh, that's why I love I love too much Italy. The food is very cheap and is delicious. I love Italy. Italy is better. Yes, I went yeah. to Rome too. Yes, it's extraordinary, right? Okay, yes. now let's go to to this exercise, right? And we finish this part. Uh, here we have the the adjective we were talking about. Sorry, this the program is a little slow. Give me a second here. Yeah, here. Okie dokie. One, two, three. Yes. Okay. Now, class, uh, I need you to tell me a P for something that is positive, right? And and N for something that you feel is, is negative, right? Okay. We're going to go one by one. Uh, Rafa, anxious. P or N for your opinion? Let me see. 
anxious, right? Okay. Oh, sorry. Oops, sorry. Give me a second. And I'm prone to concentrate the image in one place. Okay. One, two, three, now. Okay, good. Anxious. Rafa? Positive or negative? Mm, negative. Negative. Very good. Uh, Irving, please. Comfortable. Positive. Very good. Mauricio, confident. Confident, positive. Sofia, curious. Curious, positive. Positive, very good. And then uh, let me see, Yolanda, depressed. Negative. Negative. Embarrassed, Dago, embarrassed. Negative. Negative, very good. Enthusiastic, uh, Fernando. Positive. Rafa, excited. Positive. Irving, fascinated. Positive. Homesick. Uh, Mauricio. Uh, negative. Insecure. Sofia. Insecure, negative. Nervous. Yolanda. Negative. Dago, uncertain. Uh, negative. Uncomfortable, Fernando. Negative. Worried, Rafa. Negative. Negative. Very good. You see? Now with this information, right? We are going to go to uh, the PowerPoint presentation. No, the platform, sorry. The platform. And we're going to see the video with this previous information, right? Let me see what time is it. My goodness, it's very late. So we're going to just to see the video to introduce the topic, right? Noun phrases containing relative clauses as subject. Uh, I will tell you this before I finish. We are going to have classes today, tomorrow, and on Wednesday, we are going to have the class for the test, for the final test, right? And on Wednesday, if you, if you saw the, the message in the, in the group, right, in the WhatsApp group, they are going to close the platform, right? When, Wednesday. Right. Wednesday. Wednesday, yes, Wednesday night. And, and that's it, right? Then on, on Thursday, we're going to have a, the final class okay. because uh, teacher Kalev uh, missed one class. So I'm going to make the reposition for that class, right? It's going to be on Thursday. And on Thursday, we finish, right? Before I continue with the video, Sophia and other students were telling me that they have some problems in some exercises. Uh, today, yes, but it was my fault because I complete all the sentences and it was only the one part. Uh -huh. and and check uh, but I lo logré resolver. Okay, I, I got it. I, I did it. Yes, I, you did yeah, it, right? I, okay. Good. So so no 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 problems. Okay, nice, Sophia. Anybody else who has any who has sorry any problem with one specific exercise? Remember, I can help you here in the class and I can help you there in the WhatsApp group, right? No? No, but I have a su suggestion. Yes, teacher. come on, Yolanda. Give me, give me it's the important to, to check the audios because it's very bad, uh, the, ca okay. the quality of this. Yeah, well, uh, I'm trying to, to get some resources, Yolanda, to help you, with, well, for example, with the video, right? Today, I try to improve the, <laughs> the quality of the audio, but... Uh, in general, you're right. The platform yes. sometimes have some problems. Yes, right? it's it's very bad audio. The quality is bad, I and it's, it's in general, teacher. It's not only your this platform. It's all platform. Okay, I will uh, share your concern with the with my boss, right? 
about this situation. Maybe they can improve it, I, I, I expect, right? Okay, good. So let's watch the video. And we are going to make exercises about this video tomorrow, right? Okay, so let's watch it. But now answer this in your towards traveling to other countries. You'll learn how to use noun phrases to do this. So let's get started by me asking you a few questions which you should be able to answer with no problems at all by the end of this class. When traveling to another country, would you be nervous about being far away from your family? Would you feel insecure about traveling alone? Would you be enthusiastic about making new friends? By the end of this class, you'll be able to use noun phrases which contain relative clauses in order to express your ideas when it comes to traveling. So let me present some structure at this particular moment. What we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to make sense of these noun phrases which contain relative clauses. Um, first, we'll start talking a little bit about how we use this as a subject. And then we'll move into the object, probably the object, I'll separate this into a different lecture. So uh, in order to form this kind of um, expressions, first, we're going to have a subject. So in this case, this subject becomes one thing. Uh, then this is followed by a relative clause, I really miss. And then we're going to have the uh, verb to be, uh, in this case, as you can see, is the verb to be, is, and then that's followed by um, an object or a phrase, if you will. So let's write that specific sentence down and then we're gonna to try to make sense of it as I mentioned. So let me do that at this point, okay. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, one thing, sorry, one thing becomes the subject of the sentence. I, I've colored that in green so we can uh, see the difference between what's a verb and what's a, what's, a, uh, what's a subject, what's a relative clause, what's a verb and what's the object of this particular idea. Then this is followed by the relative clause. I, I colored this in blue so you can see what, what I'm referring to as a relative clause. And then the verb to be. Now the verb to be needs to match with the subject, if you want. So if the subject uh, were to be plural, then this should change to are. Um, and then it's followed by the object of the sentence. So in this case, my mom's cooking is the object of the sentence. What we're going to do right now is we're going to include a lot of uh, relative clauses, uh, so that you can see that uh, this topic can, it can become a little bit confusing, but if we understand uh, this structure, it, it shouldn't be difficult to complete. So let me include um, lots of relative clauses, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to try to make sense of them, but we're going to try to uh, make different senses with them, all right? So uh, I mentioned one thing. Um, you could you could express this idea by saying something, right? Uh, you could also say two people, or you could say two things, or you could say uh, two things that I miss would be, and then you mentioned what those things are. Um, but um, let's try to make sense of it here. Um, so one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. So I've included uh, a few relative clauses. And let me get you to answer this by me asking you questions. So what would you be nervous about when traveling to another country? What would you be anxious about? What would you be comfortable with? What would you be curious about? What would you be enthusiastic about? What would you be fascinated by? Um, let's say that we choose the country, uh, maybe France, right? So France seems like a very touristic place. And I think that a lot of people would like to travel to this particular country. So let's do that second one. One thing I'd be nervous about is, that's gonna follow the bird to be, maybe for me is getting lost, All right? Uh, let me try to keep the format a little bit because I want you to notice that we have one thing is the noun, uh, the relative clauses I'd be nervous about that this is followed by the verb to be. And then this will be followed by the object of the sentence. Okay, so for me, one thing I really be nervous about, or one thing I'd be nervous about is getting lost. 
one thing I'll be anxious about is getting to know this new city. One thing I'll be comfortable with is the weather. One thing I'll be curious about is learning about the country's culture. One thing I'll be enthusiastic about is learning the new language. One thing I'll be fascinated by is getting to know the history behind the architecture in that particular city. And so you get the idea. Um, so if we follow this pattern, subject plus relative clause plus verb to be plus the object, uh, then we shouldn't uh, have any difficulties expressing these ideas. Uh, just one last thing that I would like to mention that if I change the subject to plural, okay, I will need to change the verb to be, and I will also need to change the object because both things need to be plural. They need to match with whatever the subject is. For example, two things I really miss are my mom's cooking and my room at home. That's just to give you an example. And if the subject changes to something plural, then you will need to do the same for the rest. So what I would like for you to do now is to practice this concept but now answer this in your own way. So what would you be nervous about? What would you be anxious about? What would you be comfortable with? Okay, that's it, right? Uh, I will steal you five, ex three extra minutes, right? The class is over, but I want to, to conclude with this idea, okay? Uh, well, as you were watching the video, right? We have here uh, two things, one thing, uh, one problem, one, one friend, one, uh, let's say one dish, you know, and then uh, that's the, the subject, right? The subject of the sentence. Then we have the, here the, the, the close, right? Remember a close is like a small sentence that contains uh, one subject and one, one independent subject and one independent verb, right? If, for example, we have I uh, would be, so be is the verb and I is the subject, right? And then you say, ah, but this is another subject. Yeah, but I'm talking just about the close, right? And the close is inserted in the sentence, right? Okay, that's why the close always have an independent noun or, or subject, right? And an independent verb, right? After this, we have the verb to be, as uh, you saw in the video, we can it can be uh, for plural and singular, right? And then after go after that we have the the object, right? The object of the of the sentence. Okay, good. I'm gonna explain a little bit more tomorrow because tomorrow we're going to focus just in grammar, right? Uh, but to finish the class, I need well we were talking about Cuba, we were talking about France, right? about El Salvador. So you can tell me things that um, you will be anxious, comfortable, curious, enthusiastic, and fascinated about, right? Cuba, El Salvador, or, or, or France, or, or other country that you want to tell me, right? So let's complete this one, right? Uh, let me see, Yolanda, can you help me with this? Anxious mm. about? I'd be anxious about Okay, is... one thing, one thing. I don't know. One okay. thing. One thing. I... Like if, give me a second, give me a second here. Uh, one thing I really miss. Okay. Oh, just give me a second here. One thing, something, two people, one friend, one country, one table. <laughs> Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, right. Notice Yolanda that here the word that is an option. Option. Uh huh. One thing that I miss, right? That I would miss or really miss, right? Uh, but if you talk about people, you say, for example, one friend who or that, right? This is an option, right? You can use that or you cannot use, it, right? Okay. Now let's go to the examples here. Okay, one thing, one thing uh -huh. I'd be nervous about is uh, the, the pension reform. 
Okay, yes. The retired reform, right? Nice. Uh, I totally agree with you. Like a teacher, I'm really concerned, nervous about that, right? Sophia, anxious about it. One thing I be anxious about is the pandemic. <laughs> oh, the coronavirus. Okay, nice. Excellent, nice. Mauricio, please, comfortable with. Mm, one thing I will be comfortable with, with is um, I don't know. One thing I will Speaking be comfortable English? with is Speaking English. <laughs> is Yeah, well, yeah. Speaking really? English with, with my friends. <laughs> uh, no, or with um, is uh, we have a, a I don't know how do you say it, that uh, to to fix my to fix my phone. Oh, good. Because I have a problem you, with them. You would be comfortable that, with is fixing. Fixing, fixing uh -huh. your, your phone, right? Okay, uh -huh. very good. Uh, it's too late, but we're going to see the last example, Fernando, and we finish the class with Fernando. Sorry for the rest of the class, but because of the time, I have to finish, right? So, Fernando, your last, last example, Fernando. One thing I'll be curious about is uh, Ukraine and Russia war. Okay, that's perfect example, right? It's updated example, nice. Good. Do you have any extra question, class? No? No. Okay. So, don't worry about the topic because tomorrow we'll continue explaining more, right? And we're going to see this uh, uh, relative clauses as subject and relative clauses as object tomorrow, right? Have a good night. God bless you. Thank you, too. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thank you, teacher. Bye-bye.